Hey guys, Duchess here with the Adaptive Armory, and today we're going to take a look at the Nerf N-Strike Elite Strife. Uh, it's basically a clip-fed barricade, at least that's what it looks like. Uh, it takes four double A's, and yeah, it's a flywheel blaster. Six dart semi-auto. Alright, so this is the front of the box. There it is, claiming the 75 feet ranges. This dude looking stoic and badass. Um... And then we got on the sides. Uh, this this caught my attention. I believe it was Psych pointed out on the rough cut two by four box that uh, um, that he that the side had a picture of the blaster without a person, which is something that Nerf doesn't really do. Well, the Strife has it too, so maybe that's something new that they're doing. Take a look at the back side of the box. Uh, got it. it has a tactical rail, elite features, one-handed, blah blah blah, quick reload. Yeah, acceleration trigger just like, um, crap, uh, the Raven had one, and I believe it was the Nitron, I want to say, uh, Strife, the Strife Blaster lets the well-equipped and strike specialist o quickly overwhelm a target with a flood of semi-automatic fire. The one-handed semi-auto blaster equips you with elite power and performance in a compact high-speed package. Fascinating. Well, that's the box, now let's take a look at the blaster itself. Um... That's it, right here. Uh, quite a bit thinner than a barricade. I'd actually put it about as thin as a Spectre, which I really liked its, uh, I really like the Spectre's thinness, so I, I'm, I'm quite a bit of a fan of the size of this thing. Uh, it has uh, a new style clip release. Clip release is right there, so you don't even really have to move any finger off of anything. Um, obviously you have to stop firing to reload. Uh, you got the jam door, uh, a very hailfire reminiscent front, um, the tactical rail on the bottom, tactical rail up there, and then of course here's the acceleration trigger and here's the firing trigger. So basically just like any blaster, you just basically pull the trigger, point it, and fire. Alright, um, yeah, I'm getting about 40 five-ish feet ranges, uh, at least estimated. Um, that's about the distance from my back living room wall uh, to the other side of the house. Um, so I want to say it's about 45, 50 feet, and it's hitting about that distance. So, yeah, all around pretty good. Uh, there is one complaint, and I believe Boba Olo was the first one, at least, that I saw that pointed that out, and that is that inside this jam door here, if I can get it open with one hand, um, there's a little switch up in here, underneath here, that the uh, dart actually needs to physically push up for you to be able to pull the trigger. Now, this causes the blaster to not be able to fire as fast as some people may want and can sometimes cause jams. So the very first thing that I advise anybody to do when they bust this baby out of its package is open it up, take that out, and... I'm going to show you how to do that right now. We're actually going to open this thing up, take a look at the internals, and uh, see what I think. All right, guys. So for time's sake, I removed the screws. Not on camera, because uh, that would take forever. There were about 15 screws. And now let's uh, lift this body up. It should come off pretty easy here. Doing this one-handed is annoying. All right. So those are our internals. There is uh, nothing on this side except for... A little bit of the frame, and that's it. Uh, so these are the internals. Pretty simple. Um, you got your trigger mechanism, which leads into the push arm. Really simple, simple mechanism. Uh, the spring that holds it. There's some of the electronics. Here's the clip release, the jam door, and the jam door switch. Your two flywheels, and then the barrel going out. I would. Also, one thing that I need to mention that I didn't bring up, this thing does have um, a, a nozzle here, end piece, whatever, that will accept the barrel attachments if you really want to get tactical with it. Um, it also has two of these, these little gray pieces, one there and one there, so you can attach it to a bandolier, always useful. Um, and it does have a back piece for attaching Nerf buttstocks. Uh, all right, and here is that switch that I was that like little platform lever 
thingy that causes the jams. Uh, it literally just stops this from moving forward when it's not pushed up. So getting rid of that is really easy. And now it's gone. And now there's no, <laughs> there's no stupid dart lock on it. Um, there are a couple other locks that could be removed. I know that Lord Drac here on YouTube, he is a huge fan of removing jam doors and things of that nature. Uh, I personally am not that big of a fan. I don't really care. Actually, taking out the jam door is really easy. Um, you could... I think you could probably just take this out and then do the same thing with the barricade. Remove the switch itself and then solder the two ends of the wire together and be good. Or you could always uh, go the poor man cheater way and just find some way to always have this depressed. And then you don't need the jam door. Um, personally, I don't really care. I... I'm not one to really, I'll put that on later. I'm not really one to complain about that. Um, also, of course, we've got your tactical rail things. Don't lose those. And yeah, so basically, the internals are super simple. I was almost taken aback by how simple they are. Um, now I'm going to close it back up, and I'm going to give you guys my final thoughts on the Strife. Final thoughts on the Nerf End Strike Elite Strife? Well, I might get some flack from some of my HVZ playing brethren who are absolutely in love with the Raven. But I've got to say it because it's the truth to me. This thing does everything that the Raven does, but it does it a little bit better. Once you remove the latch trigger lock mechanism which is an easy thing to do and anybody should be able to do it. It has less barrel distance uh, from the from the flywheels to the Raven. I think there's, to the end of the Raven, it's quite a bit of distance from here. It's like a couple inches. Um, it really isn't going to affect it nearly as much as on the Raven. In addition to that, it has a lot of the benefits of the Raven. It takes two. It takes four AA batteries that fit in here, so you can put truss fires in there for easy modification. It has a mag well. Uh, it's a flywheel blaster for semi-automatic. It can take the barrel uh, extensions if you really want to. But th what this thing does better, and what the biggest thing to me is, one, it's skinny. This thing might actually fit in my own personal holster, as weird as that is. But also, and another thing is, this could be a very good rifle that wouldn't have to be quite as small and close to your body as the Raven, because it has you know, the buttstock attachment. I personally am probably going to, to try this thing out with a Raider stock or Thunderstorm, Lightning, Lightning Storm, whatever that uh, Super Zoger, you know, blaster was that came with that great stock that I think is the best stock that Nerf has ever made. Um, sadly, I, I would test them, but I don't have any of them here. I'm at my parents' place for the holidays. Um, yeah, so... My final say, this is a great blaster. If you get a chance, pick it up. I found it at Toys R Us here in Salem uh, for, I think it was $29.99. Uh, expect when these go on sale, or all around the country, or all around the world, rather, expect that price to go down. Um, at least I'm expecting it to go down. I'm expecting it to be somewhere more around $20 to $25. But it's a great blaster. Pick it up if you get a chance. And uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like favorite, subscribe, share this video with your friends if necessary, and uh, have a good day.